load and operating limits. There is a limit to what your machine can lift. These limits are different with every machine and every implement. So the limit with pallet forks will be different than the limit with a small landscape bucket, for example. This number will be lower with a pallet fork attachment because the load is further away from the loader itself when it's on pallet forks. Think about it. You can lift more weight if it's closer to your body, but as you move your arms away from your body, you simply cannot lift as much. A skid steer loader operates under the same principle. Every skid steer has what we call a rated operating capacity. This is the weight that the loader arms can handle to any lifting height. Again, this number will vary depending upon the implement that we are using to lift. The further away the load is from the front of the machine, the less weight it can lift. Watch how the operator easily lifts this gravel to any height needed. This means that the load is less than the rated operating capacity of the machine. Watch now how the operator tries to lift this pallet of paving stone and load it onto a flatbed truck. You can see how we can get it off the ground, but it will not go higher than a foot or two. This means that the load exceeds the rated operating capacity of the machine. You can still work with the pallet and move it carefully and safely around the site, but you cannot lift it more than a couple of feet. You may also tip the machine if you try and lift it too high, like this. It takes experience to work with heavier loads. Now watch how the operator takes a heavy pallet off this truck. He can budge it off the truck bed, but the machine is near its tipping capacity. So watch how the machine tips when he tries to move. It doesn't tip right away, but the force of moving the machine makes it tip. So a skid steer also has a tipping capacity. Any weight greater than this amount will generally tip the machine forward, or the machine simply cannot lift it. The tipping capacity is usually about twice the weight as the rated operating capacity. Tipping forward presents us with a number of potential hazards, so it's important to avoid tipping. You must know how to handle a tipping machine. It's not catastrophic, but it can be hazardous. Finally, to make things a little more complicated for you, even if we know the precise lifting limits of the machine and the exact weight of the load, there are other variables which can affect the limits. The slope of the ground is one. For example, if you are transporting a load on sloped ground and driving on a hill, the load is more likely to tip than if you are on flat ground. Avoid high lifting when not on flat ground. So how do you determine the safe upper load limits? Experienced operators will go very slow and cautiously when they have a load that they suspect might tip the machine.